OK, that's better. Hello, everyone. So uh, we're going to do optics, uh, as, I, as I already mentioned. And OK, so question one. A lost anglerfish has ended up one meter below the surface of the water. So this is the anglerfish below the surface of the water. It emits a light from point L. Well, it doesn't. Uh, oh, anglerfish might be might be that uh, it does emit. Uh, I'm not sure what an anglerfish is, but normally light is reflected from a fish. Uh, perhaps an anglerfish is a special type of fish that emits light. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, my biology biology skills are. Uh, not that great. The paths of free beams are shown below. The angles have values 144, 141, and 41.7. By using one of the beams to find the critical angle, calculate the refractive index of water. Give your answer to three significant figures. So which angle should I would I need to use out of the three if I want to find the refractive index of water using the critical angle. Gamma, yes, certainly. We'll need to use gamma. And how this works is that we can see that this angle is critical. Now, uh, and we can calculate it, but we understand that this is a critical angle, critical angle, because the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. Now, this picture is really deceptive because it makes it look like light uh, hits the boundary, a boundary and then travels along the boundary. I want to address that. So let's um, bet bending light. light. Okay, so imagine we're going from glass to air. So this is a piece of glass, so this is air. And we shine light and uh, they say that when the light refracts, uh, refracts along the boundary. But as a matter of fact, if we measure the intensity of light, so here's the intensity of light is 100%. Here, the intensity, the intensity of the refracted light drops. So here, the refracted intensity is 83%. Then it really, really quickly drops. As you approach critical angle, the intensity of the refracted ray drops to almost zero. It's 16%. And if we keep increasing, this is not sensitive enough, but if we keep increasing the angle, it will drop to zero. So technically, yes, there's light going along the boundary, but the intensity of that light is infinitely small. So there's no energy going along. So this picture, which which they usually draw, well, that's not a that's not a that's not a true picture. Light doesn't really go along the boundary because light is reflected at this point. Uh, the correct picture would be just a reflection. Does that make sense? Uh, correct picture would be like this. This is just shown for your convenience. Okay. Um, so yeah, you just need to realize that because this has always bugged me. Like honestly, I was like, even when I was in school, I was like, why are you showing this slide going along the boundary? Because this. It doesn't really go along the boundary. If you put something there, it, it just doesn't. It's either reflected or refracted or both. Well, it's always reflected. 
it's either reflected or reflected and refracted because you always have reflection at a boundary. Um, okay, so the, uh, that means that this is critical angle and gamma, uh, we know is 41.7. So that means this the critical angle is 90 minus 41.7. That gives us 48.3. And we know that the critical sign of the critical angle is one over the refractive index. That means the refractive index is uh, one over sine of the critical angle, which is one over sine 48.3, which gives you something. Somebody has tidied up and my comp calculator is gone. Um, here it is. So one over sine forty-eight point three. One point three four. One point three four. Does the sign only work for air or all TIR boundaries? Well, uh, because air has a refractive index of one, or well, approximately one, it's technically refractive index like this. But because N2 is air, so that means it is one. This means one over N glass. Does that make sense? So for for a uh, glass water, so if you had glass water boundary, the critical angle, so glass is 1.5 and water is 1.3, uh, you would have the critical angle, well, critical angle would be sine critical angle would be 1.3 over 1.5. Like, Honestly, you don't need to remember which way it is. It's N2 over N1 or is it N1 over N2? It only makes sense if it is the smaller one over the bigger one, right? Because it's sine. Sine is less than one. So you, it's impossible for it to be 1.5 over 1.3. I never remember these things, okay? I don't I don't remember which one is it. Is it N2 over N1 or is it N2? So N1 N2 over N1, or is it N1, N2, N1 over N2? I only need to know that, well, sine is less than one, so it's going to be smaller divided by the bigger one. Um, and that is, uh, so the critical angle would be um, arc sine, arc sine of 1.3 over 1.5 which is 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Uh, let's check, let's check that this is the case. So this is glass, this is water, and this is our, this is the tr trans. So let's increase the angle and increase the angle until we reach critical. And well, it's 60 point something. I'm guessing, I'm guessing if I make this 1.3, the critical angle is actually 60. All right, that's uh, works. And okay. Uh, 1.34, right? Uh, and an opportun opportunistic fisherman whose eye is at point E, okay, sees the light from the anglerfish. 
He fires a harpoon towards the light but fails to account for refraction. By what horizontal distance does he miss out the source of light? Assume that he the harpoon flies directly along the path that the fisherman looked down and is not deflected when it hits the water. Give your answer to three significant figures. Okay, interesting. So, what happens here is that the, the light that the fisherman sees is this, is this ray, E. So the fisherman assumes that the light is coming from somewhere here. That is traveling along this line. So the fisherman assumes that if you fire a whatever a harpoon along the li this line uh, that he will hit the fish. We don't need to find where exactly the image is. It's probably be somewhere here. That's the image of the anglerfish. But the question is how much does he miss? And he misses by this distance. It's the perpendicular distance from L to the line of sight. Okay. So what do we know? Well, we know that the depth of the anglerfish is one meter. So we can use that. This angle is beta. So we, what can we do? We can find, we know that this is one meter. This is one meter. Okay, let's start labeling. Let's label this A, this is B, and let's draw it. This is B, this is A, this is L. Okay. This is one meter. Now we know that this angle is beta, which is 141 degrees. So that's not really help. Okay, well it it is it is some it is sort of helpful. So we know that light is coming from here. And this angle is 141, so that may 141. Um, okay, so this is 141. This makes it 141 minus 90, that's 51. So that's 51 and that means that this is 51 degrees. That means that this is 39 degrees. Yes, that's 39 degrees. That means, that means what? That means we can find this angle. We can find this angle. Uh, let's call it angle theta. So sine 39 over sine theta is 1.34. So theta is uh, sine inverse arc sine, arc sine of 1.3, no, arc sine of sine 39 over 1.34, which is 1.34. 
Son. <clears throat> Son. 39, we have a 1.34, 28, 0.0 degrees. So this is 28.28 degrees. 28 degrees. Uh, what else? So this is 28. And if we draw a line, is it doing that? Okay, so we got 39. This is one meter. Uh, what do we what else do we need? This is 51. Okay, so this is 51 degrees. And okay, which makes this 62 degrees, 62 degrees. And we can use some trigonometry. Econometry, uh, maybe some of you have already solved it. I'm going to go with tan 62. Uh, tan 62 is AL divided by AB. And tan 51, uh, let's label this point X is AX divided by uh, AB. So from here, we can express AB is AL divided by tan 62. And here, AB, we can express as AX divided by tan 51. And we make them equal, and we have AL over tan 62 equals AX over tan 51. And we know AL, AL is one meter. So AX is a one meter multiplied by tan 51 over tan 62, we can, which we can calculate. So tan 51 divided by, divided by tan 62, which is 0 0.66 uh, six meters, 0 0.66 meters. So where are we now? We need to find this distance. Let's call it D. We know this distance. Oh, okay, and now we know the angle because so what we need is we need this distance. This angle is 51. This makes this angle 39. This makes this 39. And we have D is equal to XL multiplied by sine 39. And XL is uh, 0 0.34 multiplied by sine 39, which means 0 0.34, 0 0.34 times sine 39, which is 0 0.21, 0 0.21 meters. Okay, this is slightly more complicated than I was anticipating um, in my head. Uh, I did this in my head, but it, um, I made a mistake in I thought it, I thought we needed to calculate this distance, but no, that's that's not the case. Yeah, so basically what happens? Let's have a picture, a uh, picture. So spare fishing, fishing.
Okay. Apologies for the group for the pictures and Here it is. So what happens is, it's a bad picture because uh, light going at, a, at a 90 degrees to the boundary does not refract. Okay, this is very bad. So assume the light is coming like this at an angle and just like this. So the fisherman sees the, as if the fish is here because of the refraction of light. Because our eyes, well, our brain knows that light travels in straight lines. So we, it seems that the light is coming from the fish like this. Um, so if you shoot the spare fish in that direction, you will miss, miss the fish. Miss the fish, and what we're trying to find is this distance. But how? But how? By, by how much we fish, uh, we miss the fish, and that distance is twenty-one centimeters. So quite significant for a fish at a depth of um, one meter. All right. Question: Would you be able to solve this problem on your own? The same exact same problem on your own right now. Please let me know. Okay. Uh, right, so yeah, it's just it all comes down to accurate use of uh, trigonometry in the end. Okay, uh, problem two is not uh, that uh, complicated. A circular swimming pool of radius five meters. Okay. And has a single light bulb at the center. So this is the center of the swimming pool and there's a light bulb above the swimming pool. Okay, and it's shining light in all direction. What is the furthest a person of height 1.8 meters can stand? So a person stands somewhere here. So the, the, the light while still seeing the reflection of the bulb. Well, I think the easiest way to approach this problem is to say, well, where is the image? Where is the image of the light bulb? Well, this is a mirror. This is a circular swimming pool. It's like a mirror. And the image of the bulb, so S is the source of light. And the image, if it's three meters above the surface, three meters, that means the image is three meters below the surface. So the image of the light bulb is here. Reflection, reflection in the water. Reflection in water. And wow. Well, Very easy. You can see clearly see that the the ref, the reflection of the the image of the beak of the bird is seems to be under the the surface of the water. The same thing. If there was a light bulb, you would assume you it it looks like the um, the Im, the image is under water. So the light bulb is under the water, and now can you see that image? Well, if you're standing here, clearly not. So you have to be, you have to move closer. If you want to see the image, 
of the light bulb, then you have to move closer. You have to move here. And this is when you start seeing. And the radius is five meters. And you are a 1.8 meters tall. So you can uh, find, work out this distance, D. How far from the, how far from the swimming pool? Uh, from the edge. Okay, that's straightforward. You can use trigonometry or you can use triangle similarity. Basically, three, uh, three to five, because these triangles are similar. Three. The ratio of three to five is the same as the ratio of one point eight to d. And from here, we can immediately find that d is equal to one point eight times five divided by three. One point eight times five, I believe it to be nine. And three, which is three meters. So the fur the furthest you can stand still seeing the reflection of the light bulb is three meters. Okay. Is that any questions? Any questions here? It's a reasonably easy question. More sophisticated question from problem three. By the way, is it, we're going to have a shorter webinar today, probably an hour, or maybe maybe even less. If we, I just got four questions for you today, not not too busy. Uh, so problem three. S is a point source of light placed between two mirrors. We don't know where exactly S is. So A is the image in the top mirror. Okay, so A is the image in the top mirror. Let's find that image. Well, if we know anything about the images, an image in the mirror is the same distance. Remember you studied reflection, the GCSE, reflection uh, in a line. So this is the image, image. in the first mirror. And it says that SA is six centimeters. Well, that means that this is three centimeters and this is three centimeters. And this angle is of course 90 degrees. B is the image in the bottom mirror. Okay, so we go. B is another image. And we know that SB is eight centimeters, so that means this is four centimeters, and this is four centimeters. Finally, they tell us that the distance between the two images is 10 centimeters. Ten centimeters. You know how they say when to solve a problem in physics, you need a good diagram. That's exactly the case. So this problem seemed very convoluted until you just draw it and see that oh, it's just a geometry, just a geometry question, a very simple geometry question to be, to be precise. And what you need to find is the angle between the two mirrors. This looks like a very straightforward question. Um, okay, so we will need to find this angle, theta. Well, let's see what we can achieve here. If we draw a line like this. Okay, let's draw an actual line. And we know what do we know? 
we know that this is 90 and we know this is 90. So this is a quadrilateral. This is a quadrilateral and uh, the opposite, because there are two 90 degree angles. That means that this angle is uh, 180 minus theta. 180 minus theta. But we can work out these angles because we know we know this angle. Ah, interesting. Because we know the di dimensions of the triangle. The triangle S A S B. Uh, we know that this is six, and this is eight, and this is ten. So, what is the angle S? Uh, what is this angle? No, no one. Yes, you can use cosine rule. Abiola, why 90? Did you use the cosine rule? Or did you recognize the triangle? Use the cosine rule. Okay. Right, you need to recognize this is a very special triangle. It's an, yeah, it is. It's a three, four, five. Yeah, of course. It's a Pythagorean triple. So it is a, it is a 90 degree angle, of course. So if this is 90 degrees, that means if we take this if we take this uh, quadrilateral, this is 90, this is 90, this is 90. Well, we can easily work out that theta is 90 degrees. Theta must be, must be 90 degrees. That is somewhat underwhelming. <laughs> But satisfying on on the uh, on the other hand. Okay. So the next question we have a prism. We have a prism, and the cross section of a glass prism is an equilateral triangle. So the this side is equal to this side. This side is unknown. And this angle is unknown. Oh, so that's the angle that you are looking for, actually. That's the that's that is the question. So light enters the prism, reflects from this end, so something like this reflects from this end, then goes here and here. Sixty. What is sixty? The angle. Oh no! Sorry, not equilateral. Oh, I saw. I'm very sorry. Isosceles. Apologies. Uh, isosceles triangle. Um, there's one thing that is not given in this question, which. I don't know, it raised my eyebrows the first time I read it. What is not given which you would normally expect in a question like this?
yeah, the refractive indices are not given. The angles are given. Uh, yeah, really good to the base. The angles are given. So this is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees. But the refractive index is not given. So yeah, this 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 puzzled me, like um, what what's going on? But then, well, actually, when you think about it, when you have a light incident at ninety degrees, there's no refraction; it doesn't bend. So that's not a problem because that's what that's what's going on. So light just goes straight straight through. Okay, light goes straight through. Now the refl reflection, because this is a silvered surface, the reflection would always be at the same angle. And then it would reflect again And because it's leaving at 90 degrees as well, it will have to go like this. So light goes in, reflects, reflects. You only have reflection. You don't have refraction. So this angle is the same as this angle. This angle is the same as this angle. All right, so all you need is to, so if you label this angle as theta, this is the angle that you're looking for, and then get all the other angles. So this angle is going to be 90. This is 90 minus theta, of course. So this angle here, So this angle is going to be theta as well, theta, because this is this is ninety. This is the normal. This is normal. So theta. So this is theta as well. If this is theta. All right. So what can we do here? This is theta. So this. Now, if you cut the if you cut the prism like this, so this is 90, this is, the, this is not theta, this is theta over 2, so this must be 90 minus theta over 2. So this is 90 minus theta over 2. Right, so this is a right angle, so this is theta over 2. And this is 90 minus theta over 2. So this must be 90 minus theta over 2. Okay. Oh, interesting. Oh, I see. Okay. This is 90. Of 
course. This is 90 degrees. And this angle must be 90, because this angle is 2 theta, right? 2 theta. This must be 90 minus 2 theta. All right, yes. And then we can see, uh, we can see from here that this angle is 90 degrees, uh, but it is made up of two angles. So from here, so from here, I can work out that 90 minus theta over two plus 90 minus two theta must equal to 90 degrees. All right, that means uh, 90 equals theta over two plus two theta. I'm just reopening the brackets and rearranging. So 90 cancels, 90 equals, yes, two theta over two, 90 equals, uh, this is five over two, six, or five over two, five theta over two. So theta is 180 divided by five. 36 degrees, it is 36 degrees, 36. And we can uh, find these, 90 minus 18. This makes it uh, 90 minus 18, 72. 72, and this is 72 degrees. All right, so that's, that's what we did. Now, would the answer be different if the prism was different, made from a different material? Any ideas? No, it will. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, it wouldn't, because it turns out that the angle of the the. Uh, the refractive index doesn't play a role here. However, could you think of a situation where this would not be the case? Is there any refractive index that would not allow you this to happen? Well, like, yes, of course, if light couldn't go through. Look, uh, this is a silvered surface. That's why it reflects from that surface. But here, you would, well, first of all, you could have a re refraction here rather than a reflection. So if the, if the refractive index of the glass was close, let's see if we can recreate this. So light falling. Can't get it to reflect. You see, that's why well, that's why we need a. That's why we need a very. Um. We, that's why we need a silvered surface. Can't get it to reflect twice. Uh, so light goes back, bounce, bounce. Now at this boundary, at this boundary, at the second one, it it might not reflect. So basically, what I'm saying is that 90, 90 minus theta over two must be greater than the critical angle. Critical. And theta over two, that's 72. So basically, critical angle, critical angle must be less than 72 degrees. 
So if the critical angle is less than 72 degrees, this only works if the critical angle is less than 72 degrees, which is not a problem usually. But I, I, mean, uh, I came to this um, extreme case. So the extreme case, extreme. So if, so um, buts. If a uh, critical angle is is uh, greater than, sorry, it must be less than 72. If the critical angle is greater than 72 degrees, uh, then you have no uh, no TIR no TIR at uh, the up at the top surface. That means, that doesn't mean there will be no reflection, that, but means that the reflection would be very weak. So reflection would be weak. Reflection would be weak. Be weak. Okay, so you would more, you would more like have a refraction rather than a reflection, like this, something like, yeah, light won't go out, not reflect from the boundary. But there will still be reflection because if you add reflections, you can always see there's always a reflection. Yeah, whatever you do, it always reflects, except one case. So what does that mean? So sine critical uh, is less, greater than 72. So the one over sine 72, which, so that means that the refractive index is less than 1.05. So means, all right. And the second but, in which case is there no reflection at all? at a boundary. If you've played around with this, look, it doesn't, the critical angle doesn't matter. Look, if I put reflections here, you will see that there's always a reflection. Yeah, so in any experiment, uh, refraction, TIR experiment, and and if you take if you take this, you see there's always a reflection. Whatever you do, if you take this experiment, yeah, there's there's also a reflection. You see, you can see a dim reflection here, even though you're studying refraction. That's the main that's the main thing. Uh, you can you will always see a reflection. So you're shining light. At a boundary, you always have reflection. You can you can see it, and some light goes through, some light reflects. So, but there's a case if you've played around with this bit. Uh, there's no reflection whatsoever. If the angle is parallel, like this. <laughs> okay. Look, if I start decreasing the index of refractive index, and I make it equal to that of air, there's no reflection, no refraction, nothing. Light just goes straight through. So if the, this, it is an extreme case, extreme case. If the refractive index is one, there's no, no reflection or refraction. Refraction, light would just go straight through. But I don't think there's a material with refractive index one. Um, 
<laughs> maybe maybe oxygen and nitrogen. That's that's ridiculous. Anyways, uh, I'll finish here. I'll finish here for today. If you have any questions, I am happy to answer. Otherwise, um, I'll see you tomorrow, next week. You're welcome.